Uh, very good uh, morning, uh, everyone, and it's my proud privilege to be here to uh, share my knowledge on uh, triple drug combination uh, in drug naive uh, patient. Triple drug, okay. So uh, it's really uh, uh, going to be very interesting. I can tell you that uh, because, uh, uh, and I would present straight away a case. And uh, there is a young male, 38 year old uh, male, having sedentary lifestyle, non-alcoholic, non-smoker, and uh, having diabetes only for last two months, no treatment, and uh, there is no other significant history, uh, medical history. His father uh, passed away at uh, the age of 55 because of MI. Uh, BMI for this person is 28, waist circumference 98, so uh, he is obese, pulse blood pressure is normal, A1C is 9.2, fasting uh, postprandial 154, uh, 284, uh, C peptide uh, 1.5, uh, normal, uh, urine normal, uh, cholesterol, yes, uh, triglycerides little high. Uh, creatinine is normal, EGFR normal, ECG normal, platelets also normal, serum albumin normal, uh, ALT, ASG uh, are little, you know, on borderline, upper borderline, uh, and uh, fibro scan score is 6. So, overall, if we, you know, try to analyze this person, he is an obese young male having A1C of 9.1%. Family history of CAD, in fact, premature CAD. He's got metabolic syndrome, he's obese, got little uh, dyslipidemia, signs of lip, uh, NAFLD. So, you know, what to do in this patient? Because in the past, what was done was lifestyle and, you know, start with some one metformin and then slowly. But that era has gone. Now we have to be very, very aggressive right from day one and get A1C to normal within three to six months. That's what is our aim today. So in such a scenario, as per if we see the guidelines, now let's see the guidelines, as per ADA guidelines, now overall, obviously lifestyle modifications remain the cornerstone, but very difficult to follow. So it's just, you know, there are only 10, 15 percent of people who follow in actual sense. Otherwise, all type 2 diabetic patients, right from day one, there's a concept of combination treatment. In fact, we have certain trials also, a verified trial. Uh, you give a small dose of, uh, say, vildagleptin metformin right from day one, irrespective of even A1C. But if a patient has, this is 2023 guidelines, ADA. So if there's a CBD or there's a risk of heart failure or CKD or, you know, uh, uh, high risk uh, cardiometabolic risk factors, then metformin and GLP-1. If there's a renal, uh, more, you know, uh, but EGFR more than 20, in fact, 30 as per the guidelines, but we have trials up to 20, uh, we can give SGLT-2 or a combination. If there's no risk factor, then definitely to avoid hypoglycemia and weight gain, still we have a choice of metformin and GLP-1 oblique DPP-4, because GLP-1 generally they are very costly associated with nausea vomiting. We have only one oral uh, agent available and it has no CVOT as of today. Only it's a glucose lowering agent, but no CVOT available for ribulses. So overall, you know, generally DPP-4 replace uh, GLP-1 uh, inhibitors. Now coming to AAC guidelines, uh, there again, uh, you know, uh, weight is very important. And uh, more than 9% as per AACE start with triple drug combination. I am not talking FDC. What I am saying is three different medications having different pathophysiological, you know, they address different pathophysiological defects. That's what we want. Because there are at least eight, but now there are almost 14 and 15 pathophysiological defects in diabetes. Unless and until we address all those, it's difficult to manage uh, diabetes. So overall, uh, as per uh, ADA and uh, even RSSDI guidelines, you know, as per RSDI guidelines, we can see here, if our A1C is more than 1.5% of the target, the target value, target is not same in all. We just say 7%, but it is not same. In young patient, it may, will be 6.5. In older people, frailty, it may be 8 or 8.5. 
So if target is more than 1.5 of the, you know, the, I mean, sorry, the baseline is more than 1.5 target, again a combination treatment. Now, other important thing as per ADA 2023, it is not only, you know, one A1C, now it is A1C, cardio reno beneficial effects, weight reduction, and basically, you know, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, we have to uh, get down to, uh, say, cardio risk, risk, risk factor uh, reduction also. So, four things go parallel now as per ADA 2023. <clears throat> and, and this is, you know, thousands of times you must have seen this. So, there are so many defects, but we should be using agents which address all these defects. And Indians, as such, uh, there is diabetes a decade earlier. And uh, there are many other things. Genetically, we are more predisposed to have diabetes, to have cardiovascular disease, to have even renal disease, and low adiponectin. So, there are many risk factors we have genetically. Central, uh, you know, obesity, thin fat, Indian. So, what I want to convey that we have to be more aggressive than Caucasians. Because as such, CBD and even diabetes is occurring at a lower BMI. So, unmet needs today in diabetes are, one is poor glycemic control. As per ICMR in diabetes study, you must have uh, been knowing, it has been completed in almost all the states of India. Only 26% of the patients achieve A1C less than 7%. So, that means 78% of our patients are not achieving the goals. Understand? So, that's, that's an important, you know, it's a point of concern. Obviously, the complications would be more. Then the other challenge for treating diabetes is multiple pathophysiological defects. We use only one agent. Use multiple agents, low dose. Low dose, multiple agents means we are addressing more defects but less side effects. Lower the dose, lesser the side effects. Simple. Then hypoglycemia is again a big challenge. But yes, it's more of uh, education. You know, if we educate the patient, the, there would be less chances of hypoglycemia. Start low, go slow. Whether it is insulin or sulfonylurea. Start low dose, go slowly and then uh, you will. But overall, it's, it's a concern. 70% of diabetic patients are already obese. We need to reduce weight. And they're, they're already doing their own, I mean, whatever best efforts they can put. So hypoglycemia has to be, you know, curtailed and uh, weight gain has to be, you know, if there's a weight uh, uh, already high, we have to reduce. And then comorbid conditions. It's not only diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, obesity. So, you know, many things are going uh, parallel. So, that has also to be, uh, you know, tackled. And the adverse effects of the medications to be taken into consideration. So, basically, early combination is the norm today. And individualization is the rule. Obviously, you know, you can't you know, treat all the patients with just one combination. Now, we all know, this is a very, very important slide. We can see here that, you know, just 1% Delay, you know, uh, one year delay of reducing A1C by 1%, just one year. There is an increase in the incidence of MI, we can see here, you know, by almost 67%, stroke 51%, heart failure 64%, composite by 62 So, just one year, so 1% 1 reduction today, suppose we get uh, for one year, two groups, the one where we don't achieve will have more cardiovascular disease. Now, in diabetes study, I've already mentioned, it's a national uh, cross-sectional study, which has already been completed. As I mentioned, only 26% patients, you know, world over, I mean, uh, all, all over India achieve less than 7%. So, what are the triple drug, you know, possible combinations? Uh, one I have not included here, that I'll just tell you at the end. So, basically, what we are using today is metformin, sulfonylurea, pio is one. Metformin, sulfonylurea, voglibos is the other one. Then metformin, sulfonylurea, uh, SGLT2 and DP4, the latest, uh, you know, uh, for the last one or two years we've been using this also. Bioglitazone is a good molecule. It's the only insulin sensitizer available world over. And we are really neglecting this molecule. I will not say that this is a good molecule, especially patients who are obese, young people having insulin resistance, we should be. But at the same time, we should be knowing, you know, what are the side effects of this means, water retention, NYHA class 3 onward, you cannot give elderly people, again, uh, because of, you know, bladder uh, cancer, you cannot, you know, uh, or the risk of bladder cancer, 
osteoporosis fracture in postmenopausal ladies. So these points have to be taken into consideration. Okay, but there are studies we can see, you know, of this combination, and it gives a good reduction compared to other uh, combination. Then we have Voglibos. Again, uh, it can be combined with this uh, and postprandial hypoglycemia. Most of the Indian patients. Uh, there's a you know a famous uh, a Monier study, but uh, that showed uh, only for the Western population uh, that postprandial is high when A1C is less than eight percent. But for Indian people, even at higher A1C, postprandial levels are high. So so Voglibos is a good molecule, but at the same time, it has got GI side effects, and it has to be given you know, uh, prior to meals and as the number of meals, you know, two or three times a day, not once a day. Now, the other combination is, uh, you know, is a kind of a perfect synergy, uh, uh, glyphosine gliptins. Uh, if uh, instead of gliptins, we can use GLP-1, uh, that's the best. Uh, but yes, uh, this, those, so, so they have a complementary mechanism fraction. And we can see uh, as GLT-2 inhibitors, they, uh, you know, have, uh, uh, indirect effect you know on uh, even pancreas and there is uh, you know even direct effect on pancreas so that's one hglt2 inhibitors since it is an insulin independent mechanism that's very good they can be used even in the you know later stages of uh, diabetes and similarly metformin we all know so this is a kind of so if we combine metformin hgl2 and dpp4 we are addressing almost the eight defects in fact, there are some studies which have shown that GLP-1 and DPP-4, they have some neurotransmitter dysfunction uh, improvement defect also. I mean, this is also there in some studies. So maybe in times to come, we'll have this. But at least we are addressing uh, uh, so many, seven out of uh, eight. And if we see uh, the glycemic control, uh, we can see here, uh, you know, there is a good control when we combine these. Hypoglycemia as such, both have very low risk. Weight loss, SGLT2 inhibitors, they're almost parallel to uh, GLP-1 analogs, almost parallel. And then blood pressure reduction is again, you know, systolic blood pressure reduction. It's very important. SGLT2 inhibitors, there are studies, patients who, have, who are, uh, you know, not, nine, not you know, night dippers, non-dippers, non-dippers, SGLT2 inhibitors have shown reduction because there are a lot of, uh, and diabetic patients, patients with renal problem are generally non-dippers. So when we are giving only sulfonylurea, say, uh, and uh, metformin, uh, there is a good efficacy. When we are using metformin DPP-4, uh, it's again a good efficacy, but low hypoglycemia. When we combine three, then we get, in addition to powerful efficacy and low hypoglycemia, reno, cardio, reno beneficial effects and reduction in weight as well as BP. So we get so many, you know, uh, beneficial effects when we combine. So overall, you know, uh, you know, there is a reduced pill burden and uh, uh, not only A1C reduction, uh, metabolic beneficial effects and cardio reno protective effects also are there. So basically, there are many, you know, uh, uh, which we are even, we don't know. Uh, HLT2 inhibitors, in fact, act at the level of molecular level, at the level of FOXO2 and, you know, their, you know, anti-inflammatory, they decrease the level of even uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines. These are so many other advantages and uh, effect, effects, beneficial effects of, uh, you know, uh, uh, HLT2 inhibitors, anti-inflammatory, inflammatory, you know, cytokine reduction, T-cell accumulation, increased adiponectin, increased energy expenditure, fat browning, etc. So overall, you know, uh, there are a number of trials uh, which have shown. Now, other thing which uh, some of you must be knowing that DPP-4 inhibitors and SGLT2 inhibitors, they are showing more efficacy in Asians. At a, even at a lower dose, both the molecules. So there is more A1C reduction with SGLT2 inhibitors and DPP-4 in Asian patients. And this is another important slide that when we combine SGLT2 and GLP, uh, DL, DPP-4 inhibitor, there is less urogenital infection. So that's a kind of a bonus. You get additional effect and less side effects. And we have evidences world over of this combination. The first was Trijardi study with the EMPA, MET and uh, Linagliptin. And then, you know, uh, uh, you know, we have now Indian studies also for this. 
So basically, when we combine uh, these three molecule uh, metformin, uh, DPP4, and HGLT2, we get metabolic beneficial effects. We get cardiovascular, and we get renal uh, prospect, uh, you know, uh, protective effects. So coming to back to our patient, uh, you know, uh, this patient uh, who is obese young person, drug naive, family is still premature CAD. Father passed away. Uh, I'll just take one minute more. At the age of 55, A1C 9.1 percent, metabolic syndrome. So I think he fits into you know uh, this combination, a triple drug combination of metformin, HGLT2, and DPP4. So this is as per the guidelines. Now I will divert a little, you know, for 30 seconds away from the guidelines. As per Defranzo, even metformin is not as first line. According to him, bioclitazone, GLP1, and SGLT2 inhibitors, GLP1, oblique DPP4. So this patient, we can try that also. But this is not as per guidelines. Bioclitazone patient is young. We don't have any risk. We don't have any contraindication of giving bioclitazone. Patient is obese. All type 2 diabetic patients have insulin resistance. All. But we don't do anything for them. We just, we are doing, you know, having insulin, uh, you know, uh, mimetic uh, uh, basically medicines which uh, we use. So this patient deserves for bioglitazone, for HGLT2 inhibitor and a DPP4. That would be the best in this. So with this I conclude and I just you know say one thing that in India uh, we have only 26 percent patients who achieve less than 26 percent. We have to have aggressive management early and a combination treatment is the main norm. Glucovascular metabolic uh, you know centric approach and you know multiple combination so this is what i wanted to comment thank you thank you very much thank you so much sir